want to change their posture. They don't know how. They're doing all these crazy exercises to get their shoulders back and straighten up and all the rest of it. And they're using a lot of muscle tension, which just doesn't work. After a while, the body fatigues, and then um, you end up with even more problems. So what I wanted to do with this book is find people who'd never heard of the Alexander Technique before and um, show them that there was a way of improving their posture. Um, so the other books have all got Alexander Technique in the title, and this one doesn't. So if somebody Googles change your posture or improve your posture, I'm hoping that this book will actually come up. And it takes the reader right through uh, what causes um, the deterioration of posture during school life. And it also um, it talks a lot about shoes and chairs and a lot about the Alexander Technique. So it's a kind of a mixture, really. But it, it's, I'm trying to get the attention of the average person in the street who doesn't even know about Alexander Technique whatsoever. Did you find the Alexander Technique a difficult topic to write about? No, no, I found it very easy. I suppose the classes really helped me because I, you know, had to explain the concepts in a very down-to-earth way, a way that they would um, understand in the classes. So that really helped me to write the book as though I was talking to a class without the use of jargon. And if I did use jargon of any sort, I would spend maybe a few paragraphs explaining exactly, you know, what primary control is. You know, so, um, no, no, I found it very easy. I found it very flowing. I found it very fulfilling. And most of all, I actually learned a lot by, by writing the books. Where did you learn to write? I, I can't write. <laughs> I, I have a dyslexic problem, I get words mixed up, I can't spell. I suppose the, um, the word spell checker really helps and the word processor really helps because then you could, you know, in the first book I wrote, it was on a, a typewriter, it was before the days or word processors just about coming into fashion. So the first book I wrote was a, was a bit of a nightmare because I had to go with a lot of tipex and cross things out and type over it again. So... Uh, it's much easier with a, with a word processor. So uh, nobody, you know, realized when I came out of school that I could write, and I would suggest to everybody who thinks they can't write, just try it. Just try writing in a way you speak. It's, it's much easier. Uh, do you find that men and women learn the technique differently? Uh, yeah, I would say so, although I probably would get in the classes, a uh, majority of women will come to classes, but in the one-to-one -one sessions, um, there is as many men as women who come to me privately because men and women both suffer from back problems, neck problems, and, uh, you know, it's, it's rife. It's an epidemic. Half the population are actually um, suffering from some sort of neck problem, back problem, shoulder problem, knee problem, you name it. And most people will... Um, pretty much try anything. And I do find the work after, after a number of years, um, the, it, it, you don't have to advertise anymore. It just comes from uh, reputation and people talking to each other and giving, you know, giving your name out to other people. So the whole thing just rolls on, really. Do you find yourself teaching differently to men than to women? Mm, not a great deal. Not a great deal. Pretty much the same. I mean, everyone's different and everyone learns in different ways. And some people learn visually. Other people learn in, you know, um, in word form. Other people learn by demonstration. So depending on the person who I'm teaching, uh, I would maybe change the way that, um, you know, I would talk to them. But it wouldn't be so much a gender thing. It would be just the way that that person actually um, learns. So how did you get into manufacturing these wedge-shaped posture cushions, and how are they different from all the other cushions that are out there on the market? Okay, well, um, I found in the classes that one of the very first things that people came on board with is when they had a different experience. 
Now, I couldn't get around 20 people all in one go, but I did find that a lot of the problems that actually happen is because these chairs at school, they actually slope backwards. Um, it's not the beginning and end of the whole story, but I find that when I was teaching people, if they sat on a wrong chair, they would just go into a slump again. So what I found is that you had to actually either find a level stool, um, but most people went home again and they were sitting on their, their chairs in the car seats and then just coming back the next week and the problems were just as bad. So I found that it was very useful to actually um, have a, what I call chair rectifier, um, which actually you put on the chair, make it flat, and then uh, the people wouldn't be coming back every week. It would just give them an advantage. And, uh, and most people find, you know, um, most find them both pretty good. And tell me about the chairs that you have available. Uh, the chairs are pretty much... Um, I worked out with, a, with a, a friend of mine who was an osteopath. He was also an engineer, and he wanted to design a really good chair. This was back in 1990. And then when I moved to Ireland, I made contact with another person who was, um, he was connected with an uh, organization which has gone uh, out, of, out of commission now called Arise. And then he went on his own, and he came to me, and we designed the chair together. So what it is, is a, it's a chair that not only can you adjust the back and the height and the swivel, but you can also adjust the actual uh, part of the chair you're actually sitting on. I mean, I'm not the only one, only Alexander that, uh, that recommends them, but I just found it was useful um, to have this in, 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 you know, just make it a little bit of a, more of a business. So um, they're available if people want, you know, if they've got a really terrible chair at work and you're trying to teach them the Alexander technique, they sit on the chair for eight hours and they, they don't make as much progress as somebody who is on a decent chair or who is on a, a wedge cushion. So I just find um, it just accelerates the learning process and people start feeling the benefit sooner. And what type of chair do you usually sit on? Uh, I have one of the chairs that I'm advertising on the website. Alexander. Yes. Yeah, there's the walking okay. seat, the saddle yeah. seat. Let's say that again, Luke. Um, I'm looking, there are four different types of chairs on your website, so I was wondering which one you normally use, the working seat, the saddle seat, uh, the, the one with the ergonomic. Seat. Yeah, the working, the seat. working seat, yeah, yeah. I only have the, the, the arms and the back because people, when they buy them and take them into the office, everybody kind of, you know, points and looks, and that can't be very comfortable. So at least when you put the back on, it just looks like a normal chair. But actually, um, I, I find that you, you don't really need the back or the arms. It's just the base of the chair because that's actually what you sit on. So how did you come to start a teacher training course? How did I come? Well, I just uh, wanted, to, I've been teaching for about 10 years, and I just saw a lot of teachers coming out of training courses without the confidence to go out there and teach. Or, and I just, and they were just using Alexander jargon and confusing people. And I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to, you know, I felt that the teacher training courses hadn't really changed that much since Alexander was teaching his own training course. And while I am quite um, conservative and I want to keep the principles that Alexander taught alive, I also did want to teach people in a more modern way, uh, a way that they could actually relate to other people and people could relate to them. And I'm really pleased to say, apart from one or two people who only came on the training course for themselves, um, pretty much everybody that I've taught is out there teaching uh, today, which I'm very happy with. So tell me more about the more modern and accessible way that you teach teachers to teach the technique. Well, I asked them to give introductory talks on the training course. 
Um, and then the group will pick them up if they 